o'clock we're trying to do the announcement so we don't um, do that in the service if possible we have one announcement that daniel's going to go over during the service i think you guys are going to really enjoy uh, welcoming all those who are watching by facebook and then later by youtube welcome to the service this morning just a couple of announcements to get us going on what's happening we had a wonderful super saturday visitation yesterday and then uh, we got one coming up two weeks from now so come on out and go visiting soul winning with us at 10 o'clock on that Saturday, the 29th, Faith Bible Institute starts back up tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, those of you in Faith Bible Institute, I think we have 10 folks involved in that. And that's tomorrow evening here at the church, I think it's 630. Uh, let's see here. Youth Sundays, just a few Sundays from now on the 30th. Two Sundays from now, the young people will be doing the preaching. They'll do ushering and singing and greeting and all kind of neat stuff on that day both services on 11 o'clock and 6 o'clock that evening we're having a cookie baking contest and a cookie eating contest daniel's got the prizes already lined out they're really cool i think you'll like it so there's a sign up list i believe out there on the foyer table um, next saturday the 22nd senior dinner at the brian and jackie frederick frederick's house daniel and jessica have the young people working to make a really Super uh, dinner for you at 3 o'clock next Saturday, again, at Brian Jackie's house. All right, and then, uh, let's see, I think that's about it. Couples retreat, no, not couples retreat, couples conference here at the church. Uh, February 20th and 21st, Dr. S.M. Davis will be with us, and he'll be doing all day the services on that Sunday. And then on that su Monday night, we'll have a special time for couples. Brother Jimmy's going to be doing the catering and all. It's going to be fantastic. Um, February the 5th coming up at the camp, $35 for a senior conference from 9 in the morning, I think till 3 in the afternoon, it includes a light brunch and also a, I think it's is a prime rib for, for, for the lunch, so you got like a brunch and a lunch, and the Brent Rochester family will be playing and singing on that day, so there's a sign up list out in the foyer, love to have all our seniors go to that, it's a special time. Uh, they have about 100 seniors who usually go to that. Should be, should be good. All right, I think that's about it, right? Amen. All right, Mr. Carey is out this morning. He'll be back tonight. And so we have a choir special. Mr. Daniel, go take please.
hymnals, turn to number 429, and we'll start off when we all get to heaven, number 400, actually, no, I got the wrong one. Number 402, because I got the wrong bulletin, so. <laughs> if y'all could, bear with me, I need to change my page. That's okay, that just wakes you up, right? Nothing is impossible, number 422. Even me up here singing, nothing's impossible. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His Word. Walk into the voice of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone and rest upon Him. You may be seated, folks. Amen. It's good to be in the Lord's house this morning. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Okay. We have a Bible memory verse that we've been going over, and it is called 1 Corinthians 2.2. We're going to do the reference first, and then the verse, and also the reference again, and we'll do that all out loud, okay? 1 Corinthians 2.2. Two. Okay, I think I got myself. I'm hearing myself. I'm not hearing anybody else. All right, here, let's do it again on the count of three. One, two, four. If Daniel could try to wake you up, I'm going to try to wake you up, okay? All right. Uh, all right, 1 Corinthians. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 2, 2. Yeah, much better. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified, 1 Corinthians 2, 2. Oh, much better, folks. Much, much better. Okay. All right. Uh, fellows, if you'll come, let's do our offering this morning. Pray for those who are traveling on the roads this weekend and, and those who are going through the snow and the ice and so forth. Uh, I think you saw maybe one or two snowflakes as you came in this morning, right? Amen. Amen. Hopefully it will rain the rest of the way. For the rest of the day. Amen. Now you say, Preacher, I wanted to see some snow. I do too, but just not right at this moment, okay? <laughs> All right, I got to get back to the house like you do. Okay. Who's springing this morning? Jerry? Yes. Amen. Amen.
uh, before we get to our next song, I want to give you a preview. We just got these cards in, and I am excited about these cards. These things are a great soul winning tool. It looks like nothing but a simple little plastic business card, and it has one question on it. It has a question that says, looking for hope. And that's all it has on the back of it. It has our church website, www.centralbaptistyorktown.org. But here it says, looking for hope, and it has a QR code on it. Like I said, this is a great soul winning tool. And that QR code leads you to a video on YouTube called The Gospel Film Project. And it's about a 12 to 15 minute gospel presentation. It thoroughly goes through the gospel and shows someone how to get saved. So if you have someone that you've been talking to or they've been asking questions, this is something that is such a useful tool that you just give it to them and say, here, check this out. They scan it with their phone and they click on the link and immediately they're at the video and now you're going through the gospel going from creation all the way through the lord's prayer how someone gets saved there are a stack of these sitting on the four-year table out there all right they are for you to just grab one and use it so please watch out for you know the uh, children or anyone else just coming and grabbing a handful Uh, we don't want that we want you to grab them if you're going to use them okay grab them to hand them out and if someone wants to watch a video and give you, give you the card back, that's just fine as well. All right, they're pretty durable, they're plastic, but use these, use these. These are great in helping you to witness and helping you to get the gospel into people's hearts, okay? Don't forget about these. I know I told uh, Amy a different song, but I'm going to change it up again. Uh, that was all I got. Oh, yeah, we're going to watch that video tonight. In the evening service, we're actually going to have it up on the screen so you can see what we're going to... Uh, show through these cards. We'll do that tonight. So come back. You don't want to miss that. Okay. We'll go to number 206, if you would, please. Number 206. And uh, y'all stand up with me, if you will. Number 206. We'll sing all four verses. Number 206.
Jonathan, if you'll come, we're going to do that song this morning, brother. Daniel didn't know what I was preaching on this morning, but we're going to talk and preach about the subject of God's plans. God has a plan for our lives. Do we have mics? Do we have any mics with any batteries in them? Okay. If you guys can help get those. The song we're going to do, it's in your hymn book, matter of fact. And uh, it's called Rejoice in the Lord. It was written by Ron Hamilton, Patch the Pirate. Many of you know Ron had uh, cancer behind one of his eyes many, many, many years ago. And so he had to wind up wearing a patch. A little kid came up to him one night at <coughs> church service and said, Oh, you're a pirate. You're wearing a patch. Well, from there, the music ministry of Patch the Pirate was born. And wonderful, wonderful songs, several in our songbook itself. Uh, Ron is... Um, in his late 60s or middle 60s, and he has Alzheimer's. And he's getting near the end of his time here on this earth and getting ready to transfer to heaven. We don't know exactly when, but uh, thank God for a man who gave his life and has given his life. Um, the last song he remembers, and by the way, those of you who deal with dementia patients and Alzheimer's patients, the last thing they will remember is music. They will remember words of songs. They will remember tunes. And the last song he remembers is a song uh, I think he wrote called Trust in the Lord. And he could to play that. So just pray for his dear wife and the family at this time. But this song was written back when he had the cancer. Rejoice in the Lord. God never moves without purpose or plan. We'll be preaching on God's plan for 2022 and beyond for our lives this morning. When trying his servant and molding a man. Okay. All right, listen closely to the words. God never moves without purpose or plan when trying his servant and molding a man give thanks to the lord though your testing seems long in darkness he giveth a song who rejoice in the lord he makes no he knoweth the end of each path that I take. For when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold. I could not see shadows ahead so I looked at the cross of my Savior instead I bow to the will of the Master that day then peace came and tears fled away Oh rejoice in the Lord He knoweth the end of each path that I take. For when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold. Now I can see. Testing comes from above, God strengthens His children and purges in love. My Father knows best, and I trust in His care. The purging more fruit I will bear.
shall come forth as gold. For when I am tried and purified, I shall I think Junior Church, you guys are dismissed. You guys can head on back. Is that right? Okay. Well, amen. I hope you've had a good week. This one. We're going into the book of Acts, chapter number 9. Acts, chapter number 9. Let me get this thing on here. Nine. Okay. Do you believe God has a purpose and plan for your life? Amen. Yes, He does. He really does. God is a God of order. And God does have a purpose and a plan for our lives. Uh, by the way, come on back tonight. I'm um, going to start back on our messages on the Beatitudes. We're about halfway through. We're going to start out, Blessed are the merciful tonight in the service. And uh, there is a, those cards that Daniel, I'm just going to reiterate what he said. The cards that he mentioned about, these little plastic cards. They're not like a regular uh, paper business card. Uh, it just simply says, looking for hope, and has the barcode. If you want to share the gospel with someone, maybe you're even standing next to somebody you don't have the time at the moment, and you're in, a, in and about and so forth, say, hey, go to this thing and hit your phone on that thing, and it will take them to a gospel presentation, gospel film project, it's called, and a preacher is giving forth the soul winning, how to win someone, uh, not how to win, but he's giving the gospel presentation. So these little cards, they're about 30, 40 cent a piece. So please, as you use them, use them, use them, okay? Don't just grab a bunch, stick them on your dresser, and they go to the ends of the earth, okay? These are, these are something you can actually use, and it can be used again, okay? As you're handing out and giving out the gospel. You could even sit with somebody and watch it. You say, Preacher, I don't even know how to witness somebody, okay? This is done for you. I'm not trying to keep you from learning, because you need to learn how to witness and tell folks how to come to Jesus Christ. But this will help you in your witness for Christ. Wonderful. I've seen the presentation. We're going to show it, like, like Daniel said, 10 or 15 minutes presentation. We'll show it in the service tonight. We'll still have preaching, but we're going to show this. I feel strongly enough about it that I want you to take advantage of that, if you would, okay? All right, in the book of Acts, chapter number 9, the title of the message is simply this. God has a plan for you. If you want to say 2022, that's fine, or beyond. But God does have a plan for your life. Uh, Acts chapter number 9, this is the account of the Apostle Paul getting saved, which I love to read it. I love, if you go through and you'll find so many new things that happened to Paul at the time he gets saved. I'll give you a little extra added outline. As you, some of you guys like to do a little preaching and teaching. All right, here we go. And some Sunday, ladies Sunday school teaching. Uh, verse number one, and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. Remember Saul, who became Paul, was not saved. Okay, and he's breathing out threatenings. He went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. It's going to round up all the Christians up in Damascus and bring them back. They're going to be thrown in prison, and yes, even some, give, some will give their life for the Lord. And Paul's going to be instrumental trying to do this, as he did in Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, verse 3, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, okay? 
And he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now the pricks were like an old goad, a piece of stick with a point on the end of it to point an ox and goad an ox to get it to move. All right? Jesus said, Saul, you're kicking against the pricks. It's one thing to be pricked by it. It's another thing to be kicking against the pricks. When you've been under conviction by God's Spirit, and let's say before you got saved, and you knew you needed to get saved, and you started fighting God's convicting power, and you didn't want to be saved. Well, you were being convicted. That's the prick. But then as you went on and went on, and some of you may have a testimony where you just fought it and fought it and fought Him until finally you surrendered and you're glad you did in ways that raved the, right, uh, the white flag of surrender, you got saved. Amen. Okay. Well, this is what's happening to Paul. He's not only being goaded by his conscience and by the Spirit of God, he's kicking against it. Okay? And verse 6, and Paul knew what that was about. He stood just a chapter or so before. He stood at the feet of Stephen, who was the first martyr that we have recorded here. And he, he received the clothes of the men and women who were going to stone Stephen for his testimony for Christ. And Stephen looks up into heaven, Lord, forgive these men for, what, for these people what they're doing. And, uh, of course, Paul saw, saw all, all of that. And he's been fighting against even hauling Christians to prison. And trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Now, when you get saved, you become a new man. Look, uh, there's so many new things in this one chapter. Then he got the new birth. Then he got a new Lord. He said, Lord, what, what do you have me to do? And here he gets some new orders, if you please, and some new desires. In his life. When you got saved, you got some new desires in your life. You got some new orders that God had for your life. God has a plan. Verse number six, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, talking about Damascus, and that shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice. They heard the voice of Jesus, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. Uh, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him, and to, and the, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. And what's the purpose and plan? And what's going to take place with the Apostle Paul's life? There it's listed. God has a plan. Very seldom does God reveal that plan so early after getting saved, but this is what takes place. To bear my name before the Gentiles... Jesus speaking, and kings and the children of Israel. And he did all of those things in his life. Paul did. And for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. All right. And then he gets a new relationship. And Ananias went in his, his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul. Sometimes we'll say brother or sister around this place, right? Well, that's where it comes from. Ananias said, Brother Saul, he's got a new friend. Most of the time when, you get, when a person gets saved, the old friends leave them. Yeah, that happens. But you got new friends. God's people. He said, and he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Then he gets a new power. 
in his life, the Spirit of God in his life. And immediately there fell from his eyes that had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. There's a new ordinance he followed. He followed baptism. We know baptism doesn't save us, but it's something we do after we get saved. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And then he gets a new passion. Look at verse number 20. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Remember, he had been fighting against this Jesus. He had been kicking against the pricks of conviction. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name, Jesus' name, in Jerusalem, and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is the very Christ. There's a new man, and God has a new plan, a new purpose for this man's life. And God has a purpose and plan for your life when you got saved. And you've been following God's plan. Maybe you've gotten off the track of the plan that God has for you, and you need to get back on that track. I want to encourage you to do that now. Do that with the Lord. But God has a plan for our life. God knew where Paul was. Uh, God, you can't hide from the Lord. And he, he confronts him there on that road to Damascus. And Paul's response tells us that God has a plan for each and every one of us. He says, and Lord, what will thou have? Say the word, please, for me. Me to do. God has a plan for each of our, our lives as believers. All right? First thought this morning is simply this, the reality that God has a plan. There's a reality when it we dawns on us and we do have a reality. And by the way, that reality is that God has a plan for His creation. Um, and you and I are part of that creation. All right? Let me read this to you. I love this chapter. It's a very short chapter in Psalms. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man? He questions. Sometimes people think, well, what is my purpose in life? What am I about? What do, I'm this being. What, if, what is this? Where do I come from? Where am I? There's three questions. Why am I here? Where did I come from? And where am I going? God has that all worked out and can tell you exactly what's going on. He says, what is man that thou art mindful of him that you even think about us, Lord? That your mind, that God's mind is full, mindful mindful of us, of man, and the Son of Man, that thou visitest him. He came down at Calvary, came to this earth as a babe in a manger. For thou hast made him, man, a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Did you know you were crowned with glory and honor? In the creation, the creative part of your God, making you? Yes, you are. We are his by right of creation. That doesn't save us, but we are his by right of creation, and when we are saved... We're His by right of regeneration. Thou madest to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under His feet. And He goes on there and He says, All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, and the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is Thy name in all the earth. In God creating man, and crown us with glory and honor. There's a plan that God has for this creation of man and woman that he is crowned with glory and honor. He, are, he has a plan in dealing with us. In the Garden of Eden, he started a plan of redemption. When Adam and Eve sinned against the Lord, what happened? Uh, then God forgave them. God had coats of skin that he took and clothed the nakedness of Adam and Eve. Well, blood had to be shed. The plan was that blood would be shed. It was a picture of what would take place with Christ at Calvary, right? Redemption. God has a plan of redemption. We say we're His by right of creation. We're His by right of re when He regenerates our soul, when we're born again. If you've never been born again, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. Jesus said, ye must be born again. If we're going to see the kingdom of heaven, we've got to be born again. 
And then the ark with Noah, when man sinned greatly against God and God judged the world with a flood, how did he prepare redemption? Through the ark. The ark is a picture of Jesus. Uh, matter of fact, if any of you ever travel out to Kentucky, that's where the ark is. Did you know that? All right, okay, at least a portrayal of it, right? But they have the door of the ark, and on the inside of the ark, they have a light shining on that door. And you get to take a picture of your, with your family there in front of that door, and on that door has a picture of the cross. Christ is the only door and the only way to heaven, right? Plan of redemption, God has a plan. If God so plans so intricately and so in detail, don't you think God is, God is interested in you? And God has a plan for you? Sure he does. God has a plan for you, Christian. Um, deliverance from Egypt, coming across the Red Sea, God had a plan. Worship, the tabernacle, the sacrifices that were made by blood, God had a plan. God is interested in the details. Rahab the harlot, they're in there in the land, and she's, they're getting ready to go in to take Jericho. What did, God, what, did, what did Rahab do? She hung a scarlet red cord out her window. Again, picture of the blood. You go through the Bible, you'll study through the Bible, you'll see the sacrifices, you'll see the things that are done. Well, the blood runs throughout the Bible, all the way to Calvary and then continues there, where Christ's blood cleanses us from all sin. 1 John to New Christians, written there in the book of 1 John. So, wonderful things happen because God had a plan in redemption. The planning of Christ dying on the cross was all timed. The book of Daniel talks about when the Messiah will come. It talks about how Christ, how the Messiah will be cut off. And then you look at the years and the study of the 70 years and all the 70 times 70 and all these things, you'll see the planning of the timing of God. Uh, the birth of Jesus Christ was God's plan. Isaiah tells us back in the Word of God uh, that he, a virgin shall conceive. In the New Testament, the Bible says in Galatians 4, 4, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. God had a plan. A plan to redeem us, to save us. That we don't have to go to hell, we can be with Him in glory forever in heaven. Jesus confronts Paul here as, as God, had, saying He has a plan for your life, Saul. Later he says, you're going to bear my name before kings and Gentiles and the children of Israel. And he does that. He even gives his life in sacrifice in the end there when Nero has his head cut off with a sword. God, Paul knew there was a plan. He knew there could be a possibility of that happening. But he still followed the Lord. He stuck with the Lord. He stuck with the plan, if you please. Sometimes we have to choose in our lives and the decisions in our lives. And sometimes we make good decisions, sometimes we don't make good decisions. Sometimes we come to the altar and we say, God, this is what I'm thinking about, and I think I'm going to go ahead and pursue with that, unless you have a, a anything, a thought on that. Wait a minute. God who created the universe, who had a plan. God who created redemption, who had a plan. And we come to God with our plan. I know God can lay something on your heart. I understand that. But I believe it's for the man and the woman who's been walking with God all along. It's important to walk with God and obey God and trust Him and to believe His Word and to live His Word day by day. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. One of the plans in your life is that you and I would live a life that is pleasing unto the Lord, a holy life. The word sanctified means separated from sin, separated unto Christ. And as we live those lives, then God can then show us the next steps. But sometimes we like to come to God and we just like to tell Him what we think. When the all-wise God and all-wise Creator can say, I have a better plan for you. Um, then there's sometimes, you know, we, we, we have to make decisions. And we're walking with the Lord, we're trusting the Lord, we're praying to Him, we're saying, God, show me the way. And sometimes God allows some good things that could we choose to go for, to do. Now, come on now, I'm going to save you a lot of heartache here, come on. I've, I've, I've tried to teach this thing for years in my life. Sometimes there's the good 
and there's the best. The good and the better and the best. God, you may, have, you may be making a decision in your life that seems good to you, and it may be good to do, but it may not be the best for you. I thought this was a, a cute little story. I wanted to read it to you guys this morning. It's a little sad, but it, hopefully it'll help us better understand uh, making decisions, planning. When God has got plans for us, we need to seek Him who is the master planner. And sometimes the, it's hard to make a decision because we have choices in front of us that are good or the best or the better. Which should you choose? There was a man who uh, lived in a house in Austin, Texas, and he had an old house, a cabin that he had built, him and his son. And his son was Albert Jr., and Albert died in his 20s. He was a young man. He died in his 20s, the man's son. He insisted on saving the house uh, that was built many years uh, before the, the daddy did. For years, I tried to steer a tree away from the house. There was a tree that was planted kind of right near the house that Albert and his daddy had planted. Well, as the years went on, you can imagine what took place. The tree was starting to grow. And as it did, it was the branches and so forth, and the, even the trunk of the tree were getting very close to the house. Okay? And so the daddy was in a predicament. No, what do I do, you know? So he let it go. He even took giant cords and tried to tie it to the the limbs and to the trunk of the tree to pull that cord over, you know, to pull the tree over, to try to pull it away from the house. This was the house his son and he built. This is the tree that he and his son had planted. And his son had said to him, Daddy, please, whatever you do, take care of that, you know, take care also of our tree. I'd like to see that continue. There came a day where the, the cords broke and the tree grew closer to the house. And it was starting to hit to the foundation. And it was starting to hit to the windows and breaking some windows. And the daddy had to make a decision. Do I cut down this tree that my son, my, that we built? Or do I, do I let it just des destroy the house? Well, uh, more importantly, he said he decided to cut the tree down. He started with the limbs and the top and the bottom and the trunk and it fell over. And he sat down and he wept. He said, but more importantly, I spared the house that my son and I built together and loved too. When the day was over, he said, I felt that it had been a good one. Though it was hurtful, I had made the right choice. So he says, many of our decisions are painful because we are faced with choosing between what is good and what is better. But you still have to make that choice. There are some decisions that are going to come this year. You're going to have, it's not that you're going to choose between evil and good. You're going to choose between good and better. And there's a reality then that will set in. God does have a plan. And I need to seek Him for that plan in my life. The relevance of God's plan. It is a universal plan. Uh, Jesus said to his disciples, Let your light so shine before men that they may see, glorif see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. There's a personal plan. Paul said, What will thou have me to do? He was a chosen vessel. <sighs> Acts 13. The Spirit of God said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. God had a plan for Saul's life. That was to preach the gospel. He was sending him out on that first missionary journey with him and uh, Barnabas. More that he was to bear his name, Jesus' name before the Gentiles, Romans eleven thirteen. 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Acts 26, 1, before Agrippa. Uh, then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself, he said, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, as he preached Jesus unto Agrippa. What did Agrippa say near the end? Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. God had a plan for Paul's life to stand before kings and preach Jesus to them. And the Bible says, and to the children of Israel. And boy, he did that many, many times. 
It wasn't until much later Paul finally says, I'm done with you. I've given you folks the gospel. Henceforth I go unto the Gentiles. God had a plan for the Jew and the Gentile, the preaching of Paul. He was to suffer great things for Jesus' sake. Be a preacher, if God showed me that I was going to have to suffer a lot this year, I don't know if I'd want to go through this year. Well, two years ago, most of us didn't want to have to go through all the things about COVID, did we? No. Say, preacher, we're still going through some of that, yes. But God has a plan in our lives. And God is good. And God is good to us. Never judge the things in your life by judging your God. The things that God allows and puts in our lives are always for our good because God is loving and God does care. Something to remember in this new year, that God does care. And Can you imagine? Some of you older folks in here with me this morning are watching back home too. If you now look back over your life, I'm kind of glad God didn't tell me everything that's going to happen to me. I probably got up every day with fear and trepidation with it all. But God, you look back on it and you say, and you can now look back and say, did I follow him, his plan, at that point in my life? Did I follow him at that point in my life in his plan? Is this, maybe this is where I made the wrong uh, turn because I didn't do what God wanted me to do there? Uh, many of us are getting older. We see and look back on our life and there's some regrets. Thank God the blood of Christ is still present and the blood of Christ is still future and can forgive us of our sins and start a new day off fresh and anew with His mercies. God has a plan. Young people, don't live your life that one day you have regrets. What's the old saying? Um, live your life so the preacher doesn't have to lie about you at your funeral, right? <laughs> Something to think about. What about the response to God's plan? Paul said, Lord, what will you have me to do? Arise, arise. By the way, God has a plan for your life and it's never going to be idleness. Get up and go. Do what God wants you to do. Paul responded with submission. Sometimes we have to respond to submission of God because God is bigger than us. Ask Jonah about that one. How would you like to spend three days, three nights in the belly of a whale, and you're Jewish, and you have olive, olive-toned skin, and you come out just as bleached as you could be from the gastric juices in the belly of that whale? The Bible says the whale spit him up on the beach. You know why? You know why uh, that giant city of Nineveh repented? It won't just that little... Uh, was it eight word message? Yet 40 days, and none of us shall be overthrown. He preached that from one beginning of the city to the end of the city. Some of us say, Preacher, can't you get another point there somewhere? <laughs> repent, repent, repent. I think a lot of them repented just because they saw that bleached guy walking through the town. <laughs> you know, that would have scared me after death. All right, I'm a little weird on some of my thoughts, so bear along with me, okay? God doesn't burglarize the human will. God allows us to make choices, and sometimes we kick against the pricks like Jonah and like Saul did. And we have to realize it's not going to work. Sometimes we respond with submission because God's stronger. Sometimes we respond with submission because God is smarter. Sometimes the Lord has His way as much smarter I told the story recently about the farmer who had the little mama and daddy bird, and they had a nest. He had cut down some shrubbery, and they had started building their nest in that shrubbery. And that farmer wanted to somehow, he knew he was going to burn the shrubbery. He had to figure something out. And finally, he places the birds in their nest into a tree and saves their lives. Well, the birds didn't want that. They wanted the shrubbery. Sometimes we want the shrubbery when God is smarter and knows to put us in the tree. Amen. Always be submissive to God's plan. 
Don't fight against God's plan. Don't fight against the pricks like, like Saul did. And then lastly, the result of God's plan. Sometimes there are people, and I've watched down through the 30 years in the ministry, watching people make the wrong, wrong decisions. I've watched, I've watched some end results of people who made wrong decisions. I've watched lost people die without Christ. I've watched saved people who knew better and knew God's plan and fought against the pricks and they chose a different way. Because of that, there was God does chasten His children. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 12, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. Can we say that there is a plan that seemeth right unto a man? But the end thereof are the ways of death. Next verse, verse 13 of Proverbs 14, Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. If you get away from the Lord and God's chastening hand comes upon you, that laughter in sin finally turns out to gravel. The apple just turns to mush and worm in your mouth. And the next verse uh, talks about verse, uh, uh, let's see here. I think it was no, Proverbs 13, 13. Who do, whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. The next verse, Proverbs 13, 14, The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. God has a better way and God has a better plan. Make the right choices because you don't want to have to go down the pathway and reap the, reap the re repercussions of what you've chosen. It's going to hurt your life and hurt your family's life. One decision can change your life. It's important to walk every day and say, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. I submit, you're bigger than I am, God. I submit, you're smarter than I am, God. Man, if you could have a guide take you through all your life and you didn't, you know, you know you'd go for it to guide you through around all the rough edges of your life, rough problems. God, God will help you through those difficulties. But sometimes we choose the wrong plan. And we choose the evil instead of the righteousness of doing what's right. We choose the, the good instead of choosing the better in our lives. But God has a plan. There's a, I'm told that there is a courthouse in, out in one of our Midwestern states. It's situated where the raindrops falling on one side of the roof of this courthouse, A-shaped courthouse, okay, <coughs> fall on one side of the roof, that raindrop will travel its way and go by way of the Great Lakes into the Atlantic Ocean. If the, if the raindrop falls on the other side of the roof, it then goes by way of the Ohio River and the Mississippi down to the Gulf. And just a breath of wind, you can fall on the wrong side. One decision can determine a great outcome. Some of you are still looking to get married. Make sure that spouse loves Jesus first and will love you. Because if they love Jesus first, they will love you. Make sure you're, they're faithful in church. Make sure they read their Bible. Make sure they pray. Make sure they witness for Christ. It makes a difference. One single decision is enough to determine a man's destiny. And that's how you get saved. One single decision determines your destiny. Are you going to let the wind blow the raindrop? Or are you going to let the wind of the Holy Spirit guide that raindrop? Mm. And then there's an eternal reward. Turn with me, if you would, to 2 Timothy. This is the last place we'll go this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 4, because I want you to see this. Paul's life ends, this is the last writings of Paul as he's writing to Timothy before he is to give his life for Christ there in Rome, as we mentioned earlier. It's an eternal reward, a coming, the result of God's plan, yes, and there's an eternal reward and what God has for us. 
is a wise steward. Well done, thou good and faithful servant, Jesus told the wise steward. Enter thou in the joy of thy Lord. Uh, thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence are fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And one day you'll stand before the Lord. And if you've uh, faithfully been faithful to Him and you've been faithful to His plan, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. The word purpose there is the word plan. God has a purpose and a plan. Don't buck against the plan. Don't kick against the pricks. Let that goading of the Spirit of God and the Word of God in your life, let it guide you into the right path, into the right plan. God loves you and God cares about us. Amen. And what is the crown of righteousness, he says? In verse number 6 of 2 Timothy 4, you know these verses. For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. We're in a race. We're in a course. We're not racing against one another. We're racing to get obtain the crown. I have kept the faith. Will that be your testimony when you stand before Him? Henceforth, because of that, that I fought a good fight, that I finished my course, that I've kept the faith, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love His appearing. By the way, only a man, only a man or a woman who has lived through verse 6 and verse 7 will be able to say verse number 8. If you have not fought the good fight, if you have not finished the course that God has planned for you, if you have not kept the faith in that plan, then more than likely you will not. You do not live in the air of the second coming. You don't live with the fact that, hey, He could come today, and I'm looking for Him to come today. You won't even be thinking about the second coming, and you'll stand before the Lord. Depart from me, you wicked. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, believers need to know that God has a plan. Are you following the plan? Paul's love and his constant looking to Jesus' coming kept him in God's plan. It doesn't end there, though. Look at verse 9. And I close with this, verse 9 and 10. Just like the raindrop hitting the roof of the courthouse, do thy diligence to come un shortly unto me, Timothy, Paul speaking to him. Why? For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Who do you love? Do you love God and His plan? Then choose it. Choose the better, what God has for you, not just the good. Or have we been choosing the world's plan like Demas did? The wonderful thing about it right now, you can make a decision. You can choose God's plan over Demas' plan or any other plan or your own plan and submit to His wisdom and His power in your life, and let that Spirit of God guide you and show you what you need to do. Some of you have questions. Some of you have thoughts. What's going to happen this year? Some of the things I, none of us can answer. Only God can. Some of those things will come as God directs you in the plan. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and he shall direct thy paths. They had old lanterns. They didn't have the powerful flashlights we got today. That lantern would just show the very next step and the next step and just a few feet in front of it. 2022 is going to be a year where you're going to have to follow God's plan, but you've got to be in God's plan in order to follow God's plan. And that's staying close to him and staying close in his word. Let's bow for prayer. Maybe you want to come today and just say, God, forgive me. I haven't been walking in your plan, Lord. God will forgive and He will restore you and He will help you get in the right plan. Maybe there's some things you've gotten off a little bit of the plan and you need to find wisdom. And I think I'm, I'm having to make decisions between the good and the better. And God will show you. You seek Him. He's the master planner. He's the God. He, God is in my God of order. He's a God of planning. God has a plan for your life. 
Let's seek Him. Let's do His will. Please stand with heads bowed and eyes closed as Amy's playing softly this morning. The altar is open. You can come. Maybe you need to come and say, God, what is your plan? What do you have for me? Lord, would you show me? Would you show me your will, your plan? It might be something this week that you need to know God's will about. Maybe it is something you're trying to decide between something good and something better. Maybe you're trying to, maybe something Satan's tempting you with is evil, and you know you need to choose that which is right and good and righteous. Then come to him and ask him for his power and help to do so. If God loves us so much, and he does, and he has a wonderful plan for our life, and he does, he is wanting to guide you, and he will if we just submit our, our wills to his will. And some are praying at the altar of those who are back home. The greatest plan you could ever have is to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you've never repented of your sin and turned to Christ for salvation, you could do that today. You can make that choice for God today. Let God choose for you. Turn to Him. Be saved today. Tell, say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I've sinned against you. And I know I deserve hell, but I want to be in heaven with you. And I ask you to forgive me of my sin and save my soul. Lord, take me to heaven when I die. You know God will hear that prayer. Yes, He will. That old publican praying there at the altar said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God will be merciful to you. God will save your soul. God promises that. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe there's somebody in this auditorium that's not saved. Maybe you don't know for sure that if you died, you would go to heaven. God made a plan. That plan of redemption was for you too. And you can receive his plan today. Come to him for salvation. Be saved today. Don't go away without Jesus. this way finding God's plan and doing God's plan it's one of the greatest adventures of the Christian life I'm glad I don't know what's coming next week or the week after that I'm glad I can follow God and just like he said to those disciples of old follow me just follow me and that's what we're going to do in 2022 hey I just got a rhyme didn't I that's what we're going to do in 2022 we're going to follow his plan. Okay. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, those of you watching back home, thank you for watching. Let's bow in prayer. Come on back tonight. Choir practice at 5 and then also our service at 6. And uh, we'll be dealing with the beatitude, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Father, dismiss us with your love today. God, protect each one who's traveling back to the house. Those who are even traveling on the roads this weekend, Lord. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.